gonna be a bit of a heavier topic, but Amber Geiger shot and murdered both of John after entering his apartment in Dallas, Texas. So it's been almost a year later now, as of this week, like as of, I don't know by the time I post this video, but I'm recording this video the day of that her sentencing occurred, but this former white woman Dallas police officer was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 10 years in jail. So. I have some things I want to discuss around this. Hi guys, I'm Julesy, smart brown girl in charge. You are new here, be sure to subscribe and welcome to the party, the discussion. Um, I need everyone to hit that like button and comment along because this is a dialogue and a discussion respectfully and I'm sure there's gonna be differing opinions. This is actually definitely not meant to be like my <clears throat> putting forth a very strong like opinion but I have some thoughts that I'm still trying to work through here and so I really want this video to be a particular dialogue respectfully and and if you enjoy this content you want to see more of it become a supporter be a patreon where I am posting exclusive content and a podcast the pop Stark podcast for my supporters and if you're already a patreon supporter be sure to log in and check the new updates you get to pick video topics that I curate especially for my patreon supporters who are helping to launch this book club and podcast so I'm excited but let's discuss this case because it was actually and my book pretty quickly handled all things considered you know I'm not positioning my opinions as I said earlier I'm not positioning my opinions here as hundred percent correct I am still working through turning my theory into praxis and so I have some complicated thoughts around this case and I want to discuss them with you so here goes nothing. I've already said this before, I am anti-carceral state. Um, and the replies that I usually get when I've talked about this have been, well, what about violent crime? If I am pro abolishing the prison system, and I very much so am, what do you do with the murderers, the rapists, the people who commit violent crime? The prison abolition movement is not new. The theories and principles around why and how to abolish have been well thought out and synthesized. The basis that we have to understand is that we are dismantling a system and not just a place or places. And most violent crime is precipitated by the system. Lack of education, of quality jobs, of social services and housing, lack of basic human dignity and rights, racism and white supremacy that is ingrained in our police force and therefore policing. And when we dismantle the systems, plural, and violent crime should therefore diminish. Now, I know that's the area of disagreements for a lot of folks, but that for me is a loose principles around abolishing prison and police state. But what does any of this have to do with Amber Geiger murdering both of them John? Well, this is kind of the angle of the discussion that I want to have because as a prison abolitionist, how am I supposed to feel about like this case? And what do I do if I have espoused this view of being pro dismantling the prison system in a case where now someone is being sentenced to prison? Like, am I allowed to celebrate it? Like, how do I go about feeling about a topic that does have direct intersection with my life and my livelihood. With regards to Amber Geiger murdering both them, John, I am not opposed to her guilty verdict because she is in fact very guilty of murder. Nor am I actually opposed to her 10 year sentencing. I am an abolitionist in theory and I think this is room for where my practice needs to catch up. I mean, I'm just kind of at a point where like, I'm not caping for a white woman at all. Like the system did what it did. I was entirely surprised by the guilty verdict. I was not surprised by the sentencing though. And I'm just at a point where I'm like, I don't need to give an ounce of my physical or emotional labor to her. She got what she got and it ain't my problem. But with that said, I do want to, publicly acknowledge before I even get asked, whether it's here, Twitter, wherever, uh, you know, which is why I'm gonna address it rather than just ignoring this topic altogether. My answer to the fact that there are black and brown people, human beings, serving much longer sentences for lesser crimes is not to give everyone else harsher sentences. So I'm not outraged by the 10 year sentence. I truly believe it is unfair, but not unfair in that Amber got 10 years. It's unfair that someone is in jail for at all for like a loaf of bread, for stolen clothing, for marijuana, or crimes committed out of desperation. The fact that we are housing people in jail and particularly a high amount of black people in jail is unfair to me. And my answer to that is not to lock up more people in general. Where I am deciding to put my labor is around advocating that we change the state's laws that catch these black and brown people up. 
Amber Geiger does not deserve my rage or my sympathies. And I will reserve that for my people and remind us that cases differ so much from state to state because of state and county laws. And a lot of power is in the hands of state elected officials. Local elections, that's constantly where I come back to. You know, when it comes to Judge Kent, she definitely, you know, I know that's my soul roar. I know people want to throw that at me. You know, I'm finna criticize this lady. You know, she made some maneuvers. I forget what the, the part of the, the court case this was, but there was a part where like the chart, where they were discussing charges and how the jury was allowed to review these charges. She allowed the consideration of the ca castle doctrine, which is essentially the stand your ground law, mistake of fact. And there was something else the defense wanted the jury to be able to consider that was in favor of Amber Geiger. I don't remember exactly what it was, but basically everything in this this one part of the um court case that the defense asked the jury to consider that would benefit Amber Geiger's case, she allowed them to consider. This is not during the sentencing, this is during the, this was during the conviction of crime portion of the case. And I, at the time, I didn't agree with that. Now, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a law professional, and it really did feel like she was giving the case to Amber. I have a homegirl, Amber Webb Booker, who is an attorney in Dallas, who was a former prosecutor and who has been giving updates and breaking down why certain things happened in this case. And she explained why Judge Kemp made those decisions because it makes it much harder for Amber's team to appeal the guilty verdict. So it was a strategy. I, it made a lot of us uncomfortable. A lot of us didn't agree with it, but I think, I guess, had the case gone to a not guilty verdict, it'd been like, oh, this is definitely wrong. But the fact that I think the state did a really good job of presenting the case, and so they were able to still get a guilty verdict. I have talked about the thick air respectability politics that exists in Dallas when I did my review of the city that I used to live in, and that's why this case was so personal for me. Um, just because one of my issues with Dallas was respectability politics, was with the racism that kind of covertly existed amongst the white, like liberal establishment in Dallas. Really the way that the, the even, you know, my understanding of the criminal justice system in Dallas worked, like the politics of Dallas really just, mm, mm, didn't sit well with me. You know, I discussed all this in my review where folks were ready to come for my throat. You know, girl, y'all ready to come for me when I talk about respectability politics and the history of why, particularly with the black people in Dallas, that sort of level of respectability politics existed, but it was on full display at the end of this case with the black police officers who comforted Amber, the Kenyan American homegirl and co-police officer who took the stand in defense of Amber's character, the judge giving Amber a hug and a Bible telling her to read John 3.16. I'm really not surprised that we got a full display of this forgiveness that seems to have skipped over the very white Dallas First Baptist but landed full throttle in all them black churches in South Dallas. There is a long history that leads up to why the culture of Dallas is like this. And so I wasn't surprised by it, but I do have complicated feelings around it because I feel bad that this criticism therefore entangles the, the family of both of John, you know? It's not direct. And like, I do understand why they were moved to forgive. I just truly, truly wish black people weren't expected or forced by whatever powers that be to invoke the emotional labor that they would never be given in return. Case is gone how it's gone. I don't think the, the Amber Geiger deserved the emotional labor of both of John's family. Um, nor does she deserve the emotional labor of any of the black women in that courtroom. You know, the, like I just don't see judges giving the same compassion back to, and I guess, you know, how is that? That if I say, okay, we're not going to, you know, the answer to black and brown people being given harsher sentences is not to give more people harsher sentences, then how am I therefore saying that the answer, the lack of compassion in the courtroom doesn't suggest that no compassion should ever be given? It's not on the burden of the black people to like move the needle. I can kind of walk away when the system does what it does and doesn't hand out a harsh sentence. I can walk away from that and say I'm not invoking any sort of labor around it. But when we are giving our labor, that's when I'm just kind of like, and I don't know, does that make sense? I do think there is a contradiction within, you know, my thoughts on this. You know, when it comes to Judge Kemp and her hugging Amber, and I've seen the piece floating around that she was um, endorsed by the Dallas Police Association, kind of encapsulated that with my viewpoints on the respectability politics that are thick in Dallas. Clinton, the former Republican district attorney, 
black woman member of the Potter's House, TD sits on TD Jake's council at the Potter's House. It's kind of hard because you know how much state and county politics differentiate based on how the political structure works, in, particularly in Dallas County and the history of Dallas being founded as a business city, the way a lot of politicians get elected there. It kind of is covert in that there is a good bit of diversity in Dallas, but I think progressive politics, it's not, it's very much so an establishment city. It's very much so like an old guard political structure in Dallas. I not only feel like black compassion is not required and it's hard for me to say it shouldn't be given because I do want us to live in a kinder world overall but I felt like that compassion really came out of how politics work in Dallas and not out of a place of uh, having a universal compassion for everyone who enters our courtroom but I really really genuinely feel like I don't need to see black compassion in the courtroom I would love to see the whites handle it because like, that's the only time we ever really do see it see it in like traffic court with a, a white judge but we don't ever really see it in the criminal justice system when black people are entangled in it and amber geiger will have to serve at least half of her prison sentence before she's eligible for parole there is no probation with murder charges in the state of texas parole does come with its fines and fees and all that stuff you know the system ain't it ain't that easy but i get it i get it i don't think people are wrong for feeling like this is necessarily lightweight but she will be serving at least five years in prison i again i'm okay if you you are outraged if you want more. I am not invested in policing your outrage. I just personally don't think that anyone would be any better off if she got a longer sentence. Like nothing short of Botham John being alive is going to be satisfying or really truly be justice. And for me, I think where I kind of just keep going back to is that I do just hope that we can turn our attention to the black people who have undeserved harsher sentencing, to the black kids caught in the school to prison pipeline, to our institutions that buy stock and help fund private prisons, to dismantling entirely the for-profit prison system. And I, I do think it's entirely possible. I know some people sometimes when my politics tell me that things are not possible at all, but I think a lot is possible in the very near future. I'm good that if your entry into understanding that the system will never stand for black people and was really just built to replace slavery, if this is your entry point to that, great. Even if your entry point is coming from the feelings of why didn't Amber get more prison compared to what other black people have gotten. Like if we can just come to this basic understanding, this system was never really built to be anything more than a, a way to enslave black and brown bodies. I just hope that we all can really join in on this very real possibility of abolishing the prison system. And the only real counsel that I do have on this, the real only real point that I would like people to, to understand, to like truly like drive home is please don't let our outrage make Amber Geiger famous. Do not allow her to profit from our outrage because she does not deserve an ounce of our labor or concern.